Hey, hi guys, this is Mr. Krieger. Um, this is the second video of AP review number three, the binomial distribution. Okay, uh, we'll continue where we left off. Here we're going to look at the situation where um, we have at least or at most problems. For example, um, in a problem that we learned before, we saw before, using the inheriting blood type problem, uh, it says each child born to a particular set of parents has the probability of 0.25 of having blood type O. If these parents have five children, what's the probability that uh, parents will have at most two children? So this is at most two children that have blood type O. So at most two children means having zero children with blood type O or plus one child with blood type O or two children with blood type O, okay? So you could actually literally do each of these separately and add those together, but I'll actually show you how you could use this new thing, the binomial CDF. So this time we're gonna use, instead of the binomial PDF, we're gonna use the binomial CDF to do this. So let's go to the distribution, find the binomial CDF. So again, we're gonna have five trials, and we wanna have five children. The probability of success is 0.25, and we want uh, at most two children, which means we're gonna have a p-value, an x-value of two here. That's two or less, two or one or zero, and that's gonna give us 0.8965. So um, I'll put in what we were supposed to put in here. You're supposed to put in um, the number of trials, which is five trials, probability of success, 0.25, um, I'm sorry, and then we also needed comma two, okay? So that is, that is gonna give us 0.8965, okay? If we did it individually, what we would need to do is, um, well, I'm not gonna do it now. Let's try another one. What's the probability that parents will have at least one child with blood type, uh, with O-type blood? So here, uh, we could do it this way. Because the calculator actually computes it from low to high, um, what's the probability that parents will have at least one child with blood type O? That's the same thing as having one minus uh, the probability of having only no children with blood type O. That's the same thing as having at least one child. Okay, so because the calculator counts up from, from zero, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to find that probability. So since that's only a specific probability, we can do binomial PDF. So we'll go back to the distribution. We'll go to binomial PDF. We're going to put in five trials with a p-value of 0.25, x-value of zero. That's 0.2373. Okay, and one minus that is 0 0.76, uh, actually it's 0 0.7630. Okay, let's try another problem like that. We'll do, uh, well maybe we'll do both of these. Okay, according to a federal agency, when a lie detector test is given to a truthful person, the probability that the test will show that the person is not telling the truth is 20%, 0.2. If a company interviews five truthful candidates, so we know all these people are truthful, but remember the test is not always uh, accurate. If we interview five truthful candidates for the job and asks about and ask about theft, thefts from prior employers, what's the probability a lie detector test will show that at most one cal candidate is not telling the truth? Okay, at most one. So at most one means um, zero or one probability zero plus the probability of one, okay? Or we can do the binomial CDF where we count from zero to one. So we're doing a total of five people, that's a number of trials. Probability of finding somebody who's not telling the truth is 0.2. Um, and now we, we want to pick one. This is going to count the zero and the one case. So let me go and put that in. So we're going to go to stat. I'm sorry, not stat. We're going to go to second VARS distribution. We're going to go to the binomial CDF. 
we're going to put in five trials, p-value of 0.25, and one that will count from 0 to 1 because we're in the CDF mode, and that will give us 0.6328. Okay? And the last problem. Dave is a manager of a construction supply warehouse and notes that 60% of the items purchased are heating items, 25% are electrical items, and 15% are plumbing items. Find the probability that at least three items are that are per, of the next five, so three out of five, at least three out of five, are heating items. So you might say, well, we can't do this, it's not really binomial because there's, we have, um, 60% are heating, 25% are electrical, and 15% are plumbing. That's more than two things. But actually, we can branch them. We can we can categorize them in two ways: the heating items and the non-heating items. So the probability of getting uh, heating items is 0.6, and everything else is 0.4. So we can combine those as one category. All right. So we want at least three. So at least three would be three or four or five. Right. So we have to do the probability of 3 plus the probability of 4 plus the probability of 5. Or another way of doing it is doing 1 minus the probability of uh, the binomial probability 2 or less. Okay? So we would do 1 minus binomial CDF. We have a total of 5 things we're picking, 5 items that we're picking. The probability that it's a heating item is 0.6, and 2 or less will be 2. So let's actually, you know, we could put that in directly, 1 minus, and then we'll go to the binomial CDF. Um, we're doing five trials, 0.6, and the x value is 2. Let's see what that turns out to be, 0.6826. Okay, so that's how you do that at least or at most. Okay, uh, there's one last thing we got to cover, and that is um, actually um, this is kind of the same thing. Um, what if you have a larger data scenario? Uh, for example, guessing that you have a, you're, you're guessing on a true false quiz. Let's say just random guessing. Uh, find the probability that James passes if a score of 24 five or more is correct. To uh, is needed to pass. But just remember that you could use this binomial CDF. So this is a good example for you to try on your own. Uh, it's just like what we were doing with the, with the technology. And I will give you the answers to these in the key. All right. So this is the last thing we're going to look at. Since the binomial, um, this binomial situation is actually a distribution, it will have a mean and a standard deviation. The mean for a binomial distribution is the number of trials times the probability of success, n times p. And the standard deviation is the square root of n times p times 1 minus p. And by the way, these are given on the reference sheet on the AP exam, so it's not as if you need to memorize this, okay? And um, so that's, on the homework, there'll be problems that involve this, so just be aware of that how to find the mean and standard deviation. And the homework is the last three pages of this assignment, so please try that out.